Alec Manoa had his first start in the Florida Complex League, and it did not go as planned for the young right-hander. Now, a lot of Jays fans were hopeful that he could make a comeback sooner rather than later, but he seems to be a lot further away than we may have originally thought. So in this video, we're going to break down his performance, we're going to break down what other Jays members had to say about it, and we're also going to break down some urgent replacements that need to be called pretty soon. So we'll break that down and much more on this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Vrionis, alongside host Nick Goss. And, you know, not the news that we want to be bringing to you today, considering, uh, concerning Alec Manoa, that is. Now, the Jays did lose yesterday 3 nothing against the Giants. They had some opportunities to score some runs with runners in scoring position, but that's not the big story in Jays land today. It happens to be a guy that is uh, in, in rookie ball right now. He's playing in the Florida Complex League, and of course, it's Alec Manoa. He lasted two and two-thirds innings yesterday in his first competitive game since being sent down to the Florida Complex League. It did not go well. He allowed 11 hits, 10 earned runs, only two walks, if that's the silver lining you want to take away from it. And a lot of Jays members are positive about it, but hard to take anything good away from that performance, Nick. Yeah, very bad. Yesterday wasn't a great day in Jays land with the, the really rough loss and as well the Manoa. Make sure the subscribe button. We're on the road to 7,500 subscribers. But like you said, Alec Manoa, yes, yeah, first rookie ball start against the Florida Complex League. Here's the full line, two and two-thirds, 11 earned runs, 10 hits, two home runs, three strikeouts, and, and two walks. And to be quite honest with you, you know, coming into the simulated start, or not the simulated, actual, his first actual start that hasn't been simulated, we were hoping for, you know, at the very least some respectable numbers, because we have to keep in mind that he's, I'm sure, working on some things, but this line, Peter, is just, for no matter what level of ball you're pitching at, that is, it's one of the worst lines I've seen, and Twitter had a field day with it, non-Blue Jays fans had a field day with it, and we'll get into a moment about what other people had to say about it, but... I don't know. This was just, uh, it was a horrible day for Alec Manoa. We can't see the game. The Wavis course wasn't televised. We have some, you know, messages there from people who were actually at the complex, but really, really poor outing from Alec Manoa. And he's definitely not coming back for Canada today. We can say that for sure. Yeah, no, definitely not what you want to see. And the reason why they sent him to the Florida Complex League was for him to iron some things out and to kind of start from ground zero. You know, you don't send a guy down there to make rehab starts. You send him down there to break himself down and then build himself back up from the ground. And and that's what Alec Manoa is doing here. It's hard to envision when he'll be returning to the Toronto Blue Jays just because that is such a poor line and he seems to be a lot further away than we would have originally thought. But the natural course for him to get back to the big leagues was to make a couple of starts in the Florida Complex League then maybe go to triple a then make a couple of starts there so that canada return that canada day return date always seemed a little bit iffy for me and now it's totally out of the question because the way that the jays have been playing right now and the way that every game means something at this point of the season you can't bring him back up and just let him figure it out you can't pray and hope for the best once he does make it back to the major leagues he's got to fully get his confidence back he's got to go back to some semblance of his old self and then you call him back up but this is just uh hard to hard to slice it any way you want to slice it it's not a good not a good look yeah very very bad and let's look at some of the uh the guys here who are actually you know, are inside the Blue Jays. Scott Mitchell is a TSN Blue Jays reporter. He's talked to a couple people with eyes on the Manoa, Florida Complex League outing today, and there's not much positive to report that would say, uh, you know, to ignore the ugly line. It wasn't great. We may still be at ground zero, and I might go a step further and say we might be below ground zero at this point because having a line like that, again, at a Florida Complex League is very, very rough, but I mean, a lot of people, and there is a silver lining, is that maybe he was just, you know, throwing tons of pitches in the zone to try to work on his command a little bit and, you know, 18 19 year olds very aggressive hitters that's maybe a silver lining some people were saying mm -hmm. on twitter but for people who were there the stuff didn't look great and this was from uh, john schneider who of course ignored the bottom part there but he said well, we're, not, we're not worried about results we're just happy with the work he's been doing john schneider and alec manoa's outing today peter john schneider is very very positive about alec manoa but i don't think you can just ignore yeah. 11 earned runs at any level but i don't know what else john schneider's gonna say he's not gonna i mean i guess he could have said like i'm not happy with that whatever but it was a uh, pretty rough uh, you know couple quotes there well okay I, I will 
stay on the positive track for a minute here and I'll go back to his other simulated games that he was pitching in the Florida Complex League, and that was to his own teammates. So he was going pretty much five innings and 75 pitches in all of those two outings before this one. And maybe he came into this game saying, okay, I'm only going to throw fastballs on um, on the glove side of the plate. So we know Alec Manoa has been really struggling with his fastball command. He's been not really finishing his pitches and he's been missing to the arm side a lot. So maybe the focus going into the start was, okay, I'm going to throw to the left half of the strike zone and that's where I'm going to attack. And maybe he only threw fastballs for those 75 pitches or however many pitches he was, he was throwing. So maybe he was on that side of the plate, he was letting those 18, 19 year old rookie hitters key into that part of the zone. And it doesn't matter what level of pro ball you're at. Anyone can hit a pitching machine and that's probably what he was working on. So uh, maybe I'll give him the benefit of the doubt in, in that direction. Maybe that's exactly what the Blue Jays wanted, but it's hard to walk out of a start like that with those results with any sort of confidence if you're Alec Mano. And I think the whole point of sending him down was to get him more confident and be ready to come back and make an impact at the major league level. Yeah. And he's been down now for, I don't know how long it's been a couple of weeks at the very least. And We'd hope to see some positive progress. You know, obviously the simulated stuff, we never really know how good that is is truly being. But this is Marcus Stroman. He had a bit of an input. This was literally two hours ago, and he said, I can't wait for Manoa to get back to the MLB and make you eat your words. And then basically just said that everyone's hating on him, going through tough times and stuff like that. So seems like Stroman always has the, the Blue Jays back, at least the players is back, not the front office for sure. But I'm just hoping that he makes some positive strides over the next week, two weeks, three weeks, because he's definitely not coming up, I would say, at any point relatively soon which is going to lead into our next kind of topic here in a second but he needs to start making some positive you know i guess not regression some positive you know impact somewhere and hopefully and you're right maybe the blue jays front office was pleased with the not the result but the process and that's kind of the only way that you know they're happy there is if maybe they said like you said pounding the zone pound the zone pound the zone and like you said everyone can hit uh fastballs right down the middle yeah. but i don't know who knows i mean the most important thing is just to get him back to how he used to be and that's what the jays are working towards if he comes back to the major leagues next year and he posts a mid three era you think anyone's going to talk about his florida complex league start Definitely, that yeah. he gave up 11 runs in no they're not so maybe they do need to totally break him totally revamp whatever was wrong with him and uh, and then just go from there but he's still a ways away uh, i think that's the main issue right here is that the Jays need to find a replacement because Alec Manoa this year seems to be a wash for him, but they're looking to get him back for next year. Yeah, and there's here's a quick re replacement option is that yesterday uh, the Seattle Mariners have designated right-hander Chris Flexen for assignment, and if you were around, you know, the Jays back around Christmas time of last Christmas when the Blue Jays were shopping Teoscar Hernandez, some people thought that Chris Flexen was going to be the return that came back for that trade. It ultimately was Eric Swanson, thankfully, but Chris Flexen's a guy from 2021 and 2022, had a mid-three ERA, he was solid in the league, and in the past couple of years, he's been really, very bad. Peter, what would your thoughts be on potentially getting Chris Flexen? We thought maybe Zach Plesak could have been on the way, but he had some other kind of like work ethic and off-field issues that may have kind of stopped that. But Chris Flexen could be a guy that the Jays are interested in. But I don't know. They moved the bullpen game to today, so who knows? You need someone with veteran experience, and that's the bottom line here, Nick. You can't keep going with bullpen days, and luckily the Jays have had some off days every now and then to kind of reset their rotation and pitch everyone on regular rest, but it's not sustainable to have a four-man rotation for, I believe, the next 80 games or, or 82 games, however many games are left in the regular season. So you need someone with veteran MLB experience. You need someone that has had some sort of success in the major leagues, and you need someone to eat innings. It's as simple as that because – Having a bullpen day today against Logan Webb, who's one of the top starters in Major League Baseball, I don't think it's going to go well. And I'm sorry to burst your bubble, Jays fans. I think we're headed for a scheduled loss today. And that's just the way that the Jays are going to have to operate from here on out. Luckily, the other teams that are chasing them or the other teams that are ahead of them have not been good themselves. So the Jays can kind of tread water here until they do find a replacement. But time, the, the clock is ticking, and you got to find that guy as soon as possible, whether it's Chris Flexen, Zach Plesak, Michael Lorenzen, someone else on the trade market, get it done because you're taxing your bullpen, and your bullpen is probably going to be your biggest calling card if you do manage to squeak into the playoffs. Yeah, I have a little bit of hope for today's game. Obviously, yesterday didn't instill much hope, but a bullpen game today is going to be rough against 
Logan Webb and a San Francisco offense that is starting to, you know, really hit well over the past however many 12 or 13 games. But that'll wrap up the video. Let us know what your thoughts are on that. And hopefully Alec Manoa can make some sort of return, if not this season, then come back strong next season. But that'll wrap it up. Hopefully the Jays can win today. We'll see you tomorrow.